How to live loop in Ableton Live 12 without latency. Hi, I'm Toby from AbletonDrummer.com and I want to show you how you can now record and live loop yourself in Ableton Live 12 without latency. It's possible to some extent in Ableton 11 as well, but it always needs a different and very complicated routing. And now you have the option to deal with the in and output latency and with the delay compensation latency in a different way since Ableton Live 12. Okay, so I'm gonna show you and explain you what the latencies or the two main latencies we are dealing with in Ableton Live in general. If you just quickly want to jump um, to fix that, you can just um, open up the options view, uh, the view, and you go to mixer control. You open up the track options here, and then you get those uh, tabs below the tracks here, and you can just turn off keep latency and switch on reduce latency when monitoring and then you're fine as well. If you want to understand why, then watch this video. Okay, so um, we're using my one button live looper here, which is a max for live device. It's very great, obviously, because I made it. Okay, so it's a little bit showing you this device here as well, obviously. So this is using Max for Life. Max for Life is included in Ableton Live Suite or can be bought as an add-on towards Ableton Live Standard. And you can use it for recording in session view up to 10 tracks per looper. You get this looper window here. You can change the size. You can have multiple loopers. Uh, you can have up to 100 loopers. All depends on the system and what your system can handle. But this is very similar to looping pedals and this is using this technique here, okay? So if you wanna find out more about the one button live looper uh, specifically, have a look. Uh, there are links in the video description here. Okay, so first of all, in Ableton Live 12, we are dealing with two latencies here. The first one would be the in and out latency. So if we open up our preferences, maybe let's fold down the looper for now. So if we have a look, we have the buffer size here and the input and the output latency, which is um, together the overall latency. And if I set my buffers higher, by buffer size higher, the latency will increase. I can do more stuff if I have a huge set in production. Um, I might want to set this up really high because then I can use more tracks, more effects, etc. But if I'm playing live, I want to set this up as low as possible. And that really depends on your system. Um, same goes for the sample rate. The higher the sample rate, the lower the latency. So, um, and here as well, I wouldn't advise you to use anything higher than uh, 48,000 for live. But if your system can handle it and if you do stuff here, you can decrease your latency as well, your in and out latency as well via setting this higher, okay? So those are pretty good uh, values here. So if I'm like on 64 samples, I have an overall latency of six milliseconds, okay? So that means the audio I'm sending into, the audio signal I'm sending into Ableton needs around three milliseconds here, 2.96 to convert this to a digital signal. And then uh, for Ableton Live in general, like all of the stuff which is coming out from Ableton, the metronome, etc., is being sent back um, with a latency of 3.35 milliseconds here. So that's in and output latency. If you want to dive deeper, have a look. I wrote a blog about this as well, a blog post about this, so um, you can understand a little bit more. But this is the latency we are dealing with here, the first latency, uh, and this is always dependent on your system. If your sound card, if your driver, etc., if it's if it's if it's a proper. Um, thing, a uh, proper audio interface you can use for performance here. So, and your computer as well, what your computer is capable of. So, one quick point about the myth of zero latency. As soon as you use, no, even not if you use technology, but even before, latency is always introduced. So, if I'm just 
playing in a band and someone is two meters away, um, we have approximately six milliseconds of, um, uh, of time in between the sound I'm playing is being heard and received by the person I'm playing with. So it, uh, it's approximately uh, three milliseconds per meter okay so two meters would be six milliseconds so if you play in a huge band what i'm the point i'm trying to make here is that musicians are used to deal with latency but there is a challenge when it comes to use um, electronic devices where um, you might not feel um, the the vibration of the instrument or something like that or uh, especially if you're singing your voice, you know, you feel your voice and the latency can be quite off-putting um, for you. So you need a system here which has the, capa the, the, the capability to um, create a good latency value. There is no such thing as zero latency even with hardware, hardware loopers. That's a myth, okay? That doesn't exist. So what you need is a system which introduces a latency which feels right for you. Okay, so how is Ableton Live in general, not only 12, handling this latency here being introduced via your sound card, via changing the audio signal to digital and changing it back to analog as well. So Ableton Live is taking those values here when you do a recording and is shifting your recording back. Um, those values here. If you are not monitoring that signal, if you are monitoring that signal, so if you send it out to the front of house or if you listen to it on your headphones and if this track you're recording on, if the monitor is set so that you can listen to it and if it's not switched off, this latency values will be printed on that track. And that's the new thing in Ableton Live that you can actually tell Ableton Live even if I'm listening to my recording track here, please push this back, those values here as well, when I replay those things so the latency is not being printed on here. I show you that in detail in a second. First, I want to show you the second um, latency we are dealing here with, and that's the latency being introduced by audio effects It can be happening via uh, VSTs, for example. So um, let's have a look here. I got a compressor here on a track. It could be any track here. If keep latency is on or off, that doesn't change a thing. Keep latency is just for recording and shifting stuff after the recording here. Okay, so compressor. So just to give you one example, the compressor can be set to look ahead 10 milliseconds. And now I'm introducing 10 milliseconds of latency here introduced via this audio device um, here now. So everything else, the metronome and all the other tracks are getting shifted back if um, delay compensation is being turned on, which it is, via defaults and that makes sense because you want audio to line up when you are um, in production. So let's switch off reduce latency while monitoring delay compensation. This would be the default setting when you're opening up Ableton Live and again that applies to Ableton 11 or 10 as well. So I set up a um, longer delay latency device here. So I took 50 um, <laughs> 50 compressors here, which are all being set to introduce 10 milliseconds. So the milliseconds are uh, each 10 milliseconds will be applied here. So if you have a lot of devices which are introducing a latency, a lot of audio effects or plugins here, the track with the most um, Latency will be taken as the measurement here for Ableton Live and everything else, the metronome and all the other tracks are being pushed back to line up with those 500 milliseconds here now. So if I now switch on a microphone which is going into this track here, um, if I switch that on, you should be able to 
Here now, here now, my, 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 delay, delay, okay? Uh, so obviously this is really confusing. And what you can do in Ableton 11 already as well, you can turn on reduce latency when monitoring. So if your, if a track is, if you're monitoring a track, so if you want to hear what's happening on this track and have the sent to the front of house or to your headphones, um, this can be said to not listen or not react to the uh, delay which was or which is introduced somewhere in your Ableton Live set via audio effects or via plugins. Okay, so if I now, hey. now switch, switch there, there. Blah, blah, good. reduced latency when monitoring. So this track is now not being pushed back 500 milliseconds it's straight out and just using your in and out latency which i explained earlier so this is pretty cool and it's working in 11 already the difference now let me switch off the track so the difference here is now with ableton 12 that if you would have used this setting here in ableton 11 for example um the record if you are recording something now the in and out latency will be pushed on this track everything which is monitored as well a track which is monitored as well is um having you will record this latency on this recording and now in Ableton 12, and which is really great, you are able to record this without the latency. So you have to turn off keep latency. So once more, if we have a look in the view section here, if we go to mixer controls, if we deselect track options here, those boxes are hidden. So if we go to view again, go to mixer control, and if we switch on track options, we now get this keep latency button here and we can deselect this which is all you need to do maybe if you're using a lot of um, audio effects here which are introducing um, latency because of its processing so the second latency um, thing here is you want to switch on reduce latency when monitoring so now you are able let's quickly do this so if we go back to my one button live looper let's set this up a little bit bigger i'm just going to record a few uh one two three four here so i'm going to turn this track on now no latency and record one two three four 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 one and you can hear it is not recording with this latency um values i got it here because the audio is being pushed back right to the front and i'm even a little bit early here so i mean you can quantize this via my auto quantize device if you need to you can use that with midi as well um yes and so this is a really cool thing for people who are live looping let me turn off my microphone here again so this is a really 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 cool tool because you can actually now monitor things directly on the tracks in the looper if you want to so you could use those monitor sections here you not necessarily need a um source track like i'm using here so i'm sending my mic in into this one track and then my looper is taking that from this track here still makes sense if you don't want to have audio going out doubled but that's something to look into the looper technique here i just wanted to make this point keep latency i think in most cases will be to will be to will be you want to turn it off in most use cases, okay? Especially in live looping here. In this setup I showed you here, if you're using some live looping techniques here, where you are recording and playing back stuff, you can now eliminate those values here and Ableton is pushing the recording back to where it should uh, be and lining that up. So that's really great about Ableton Live 12. Check it out. Um, yes, and... My life looper obviously is a great tool as well. 
you know what I mean. Um, if you want to find out more about those techniques here, I have a lot of uh, Max for Life devices for um, live use or especially for live performance not only but my focus is live performance here so if you are into that sort of thing have a look um, on my homepage, page cheers bye bye